प्रसार भारती अभिलेखा गार की प्रस्तुति सदा बहार सुनहरे दौर का अनमोल खजाना योर एक्सेलेंसी प्राइम मिनिस्टर श्री शांति स्वरूप भटनागर एंड फ्रेंड्स आई रिगार्ड इट इज अ ग्रेट प्रिविलेज टू बी एसोसिएटेड विद द सेरेमनी ऑफ इनोग्रेटिंग द नेशनल फिजिकल लेबोरेटरी ऑफ इंडिया apart from the intrinsic importance of this event the presence of distinguished scientists of international repute in our midst lends a distinction to this ceremony which must make participation therein a coveted honor i must however confess to a feeling of great diffidence and in submitting to the scrutiny of such discerning and scientific eyes I hope you will extend me some mercy and consideration in asking for it. I am emboldened by the kind and generous words Sri Shanti Swarup has just said and also by his claim made at the time of the ceremony of laying the foundation stone of that is this very institution that there is more unanimity among scientists than among politicians. The unique nature of this occasion is apt to apt to lift one from rather the mundane existence of a politician to the delightful atmosphere of a dreamer and a thinker and i hope you will bear with me for a moment as i indulge in some reflections ever since his evolution the human being has been used to pilfering the secrets of nature and applying the knowledge so gained to his own practical use scientific research through ages has been one of long expedition of the men into the innermost recesses of natural forces and phenomena and the utilitarian advantage has come to him through the urge of harnessing these forces in the service of mankind nature red in tooth and claw or nature in its mildest disposition alike has yielded up scientific data which has contributed to the material progress of nations of the world in his relentless pursuit of practical science however the scientist has always come into conflict with the spiritualist and the man of religion the latter has always regarded the scientist as a destroyer of spiritual values and the killer of the superior being who has brought humanity from an ethereal heaven to the very nadir of degeneration symptomatically in terms of religious lore it might be said that the very first scientific operation which a man performed on his own rib has brought for him a perpetually expensive and troublesome legacy for the team all that i have read about the laboratory which you see today enshrined in such magnificent building set in such picturesque surroundings indicates that while it is no answer to the spiritualist doubts or the humanist despair it is essentially a response to the men's call for precision and perfection it will combine the emotional zeal of fundamentalist with the practical approach of the utilitarian it will furnish that scientific aid to industry without which the present day industrial efficiency which would soon fight would soon find itself lost in the desert sands of dead habit it would be a great safeguard against the cheating of common men by means of imperfect standards of weights and measures length and height it would be a great testing house of raw materials and finished products the researches and tests carried out in its rooms would i am sure and reach the realm of science which new with new found treasures within its walls the scientist philosopher will display the same enthusiasm as an astronomer does when a new star swims into his ken he will exhibit the same absorption in his mission as the celebrated philosopher who distinguished the ordinary standards of decency and rushed out of his bath to a bewildered audience shouting for reka he will express the same delight in his achievements as a young child who discovers the use of his limbs while i visualize the very distinguished head of this institution dr krishnan in this in his very droll my mind also runs to the question how far in its actual results this laboratory which has been brought into the world of indian science 
with so much care and affection and after so much devoted and concentrated effort on the part of the distinguished band of eminent scientists led by Sri Santi Swarup will serve to relieve these and further generations of the ills to which human flesh is heir. Will it, for instance, give the finance minister the alchemist touch so that he can turn the basis metal into gold and thus relieve him of many a night? Or can it furnish the commerce minister with a button which he could press in order to let all the jute held in Pakistan come rolling <laughs> by despite the existence of jute board and custom officers? Would it enable our much worried food minister to grow wheat or sweet potatoes or topioca out of thistle and thereby upset an age-old instructional proverb? Can it provide our massive minister of industry with a ready means <laughs> of substituting mechanical for human control of industry in order that he might run it without innumerable committees and conferences which it is inevitable lot to hold. These are some of the demands which we politicians would like to make on the scientists. The list will, I am sure, be unending if the letter would allow us a free reign. There are, they are, however, merely symbolic of the troubles and woes which afflict the world around us, and I ask my distinguished audience whether scientist in its quest of nature, <laughs> whether science in its quest of nature, secret is be going to advance <laughs> the human race towards its goal of eternal happiness, or whether will it open a veritable Pandora's box of evil forces of destruction of mankind. It is my earnest and sincere prayer that this laboratory and the distinguished bands of research workers who will operate in it will provide a positive answer to this problem as an inspiration to their fellow scientists in other parts of the world. Ever since the discovery of the gunpowder, the destructive agencies of science have been taking a heavier and heavier toll on human life. Under the influence of the constructive and creative efforts of science, humanity settled down to an enjoyment of fruit of civilization, only to find civilized existence threatened by conflicts in which scientific genius on both sides is engaged in outpacing each other, in developing more and more, evolving more and more powerful engines of destruction. The scientific conscience as its public counterpart consoles itself by finding an ideological cloak for this race in mutual slaughter, but no amount of ideological justification can buttress this resort to primitive and baser instincts of men. Human dignity and ideological sublimity alike demands that the defense of the idea is entrusted to the nobler instincts. In my judgment, it is in this reasoning that lies the appeal for the inhabitants of this subcontinent of the gospel of peace and nonviolence. In this international gathering of scientists, I should therefore like earnestly to appeal to these friends to consider how best they can promote the cause of peace in humanity through science. Finally, let me say a word of appreciation of the hard and solid work of Sri Shanti Sarup Bhatnagar, Dr. K. N. Mathu, and their jealous collaborators, which you find so well exemplified in the noble edifice and the installation which I have the honor to declare open today. The building of a chain of such laboratories all over India in such a short time is a creditable achievement which I wish would inspire similar efforts in other spheres of governmental activity. Friends, I shall now proceed to discharge the very pleasant duty which has been entrusted to me.